Joined on the phone today by Thomas Hodge. He is the author of the book VHS Video Cover Art. How are you today, sir? I'm good, thank you, and thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited about this book, and uh, obviously I grew up in the 80s, so everybody uh, had some memories of being at the video store. Is that kind of what led you to write this book, just kind of growing up in this sort of culture? Well, yeah. I mean, it's also the work that I do uh, with the poster, because I do film posters under the uh, Dude Designs. So uh, Hobo with a Shotgun, uh, Wolf Cop, Innkeepers, films like that, which are sort of uh, harping back to this basically style of artwork, which is something that I loved as a kid and died around the sort of end of the 90s, basically, with DVD. So it was, there was this, and I, I love VHS still, I still collect it, but there's this amazing artwork out there that just a lot of people have never seen and or have forgotten about now. So, I mean, that was wanting to showcase this art and bring it back against people was the big, the big push for me. So when it comes to the actual book itself, uh, what's the layout like? Is it just a, a lot of pictures of these old uh, covers, or do you kind of give a little synopsis of the film as well? Well, this is the thing, uh, because I obviously got an introduction and a foreword by uh, Justin's, uh, Justin, oh, what the name's gone? Justin Ishmael from Mondo. But uh, for the actual film, for the actual covers, this is the first book that's ever shown uh, the front and the back, so you get the whole cover. And I was toying around with the idea of, of sort of writing sections for it, but I really wanted the, the covers just to speak for themselves, and I didn't want to reduce the scale down. I wanted to get the covers as big as they could on the, on the book pages. So with this, you also get the synopsis on the back, because that, I mean, that was the video cover. I mean, it, was, it wasn't just a front image. It was the, it's, it's the wonderful copywriting on the back, which is cheesy and completely inaccurate in places. Uh, so it's, it's a mixture of all those things, really. So, yeah, you get to read the, the back of the books. I mean, also, these are the collection uh, of, of uh, UK video covers. Uh, but the reason behind this was something, something from my experience that I've got a knowledge of. But it was also, this is artwork that's not been seen out of the UK before, or Europe, really, uh, and particularly won't have been seen in America. So while you sort of know the films, it's, it's, it's introducing a whole new range of artworks for films that you you do know and a lot you probably don't know. Yeah, when you think back to that time throughout the 80s and, uh, you know, even up till maybe the mid-90s, it seems like a lot of the box art had, you know, great artwork on it. It wasn't just stills from the films. And, and you're saying, you know, over in the UK, even uh, a second, a different copy, and you don't really see that nowadays. No, you can't. I mean, unless you're a sort of real avid collector, it's just impossible to get a lot of these, um, particularly in America. Um, particularly, I mean, now there's the big trend with, with new sort of new artwork for movies and uh, with people like Mondo. Uh, and this is, again, this is an amazing celebration of the sort of the artwork, that you've, the original artwork that you've probably never seen. But also it's by a bunch of amazing artists as well, which, as well, I mean, everybody knows Drew Struzan, but... There's artists like uh, Enzo Sciotti, uh, Claudio Rento Cassaro, uh, Laurent Melchi, who produced amazing artworks as well that you know that need to be seen. And but it, yeah, I mean it was brilliant. It was a brilliant, uh, inspiring time for films, particularly the VHS, because there were so many being pumped out every every week, and each one had to compete in such sort of close confines next to each other on the shelf, and you had that one image to sell it. And uh, so they, were, they, they really went for it back then. Also, there's a lot of small companies, so it wasn't as much marketing, demographics, and all that sort of uh, to go through. It was just, it was these small little uh, independent uh, distribution companies setting up and just releasing these films uh, that, that, that allowed this sort of uh, climate to, to generate these amazing uh, images, really. And it was. I mean, it's a good celebration of... of, of film art and i mean i saw i always saw the going to the video shop as a sort of almost like a gallery with i just loved it as a kid just seeing these walls and walls of these amazing colorful images i mean they say in the book it's uh these uh it was full of busty women mus muscle men with mustaches and nightmare inducing monsters it, it really sort of captivated me with my imagination and it stayed with me all this time and now that's what led me on to this uh, to the career that I do now with the film posters, I and mean, it's totally inspired by that. 
and I think it's inspired a lot of people of the same generation to uh, to get into films and art, really. Yeah, for sure. Again, we're on the phone today with Thomas Hodge and talking about his book, VHS Video Cover Art. You know, and you mentioned uh, having memories as a kid being at the video store, whether you're over in the UK or you're here in the States. A lot of kids have fond memories of that. And uh, kind of sad to think now, kids nowadays, they don't experience that anymore. No, no. I mean, that is, that, that is a sad thing. And, and it doesn't inspire. I mean, particularly with kids downloading films now or, or, or streaming it doesn't have and, and these images were your gateway into films these, these box arts and the, the, the covers and, and it sort of lead you learn about things and inspired you well not learn about film really and inspire you to, to find the next thing and just text on a computer now just it's not the same and also I mean it was I mean I was I mean I'm sure everyone used to do the same thing you used to sit on the sofa or the bed and you'd hold the box in one hand and watch the film it was kind of like a warmer pack to the film almost uh so it was, yeah. I mean, it really did inspire, and it's a shame that the, the kids don't have that sort of. And even the film posters, and then the DVD covers that are produced now, they're they're very. Everything looks very similar. It's sort of very homogenised, marketed. It's a shame, really. And this is this is really sort of independent creativity at a time when it was, well, you know, still quite a new industry. And the film film industry, so the VHS took the film industry a lot by ha- by surprise. They didn't think that people would want to watch these films over and over again or even own films back then so uh yeah it did sneak up a bit like the internet really it did sneak up a bit on the big film companies but it does seem like nowadays you know sort of like vinyl as well a vhs collecting kind of coming back and people are paying some some big money for some of these tapes on ebay yeah some tapes go for thousands now I mean, particularly in the UK, where there was the, the, the video nasty, where a load of films got banned, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre has been was banned for many years. So they really go for still high for money. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I particularly like it still because it's, I mean, DVD with a, and digital, that can be easily sort of replicated. But if you get an old videotape and you stick it in, it's not been played for 20-odd for years. It, it's a sort of event. It's something you can't recreate. You can't duplicate that VHS and you can put it on your computer but it doesn't have that organic feel to it really and and you know and watching a film to make an event of it is kind of what I enjoy about collecting these old films also some of the titles I mean like the ones in you see in the book uh, films like Demon Warp uh, Edge of Terror uh, Grave Misdemeanors but you, you still don't hear of many of these films so a lot of people are now coming across saying oh I don't know half these films so there are still out there a lot that haven't made it into into the new formats. Well, and I have to assume, as a guy who uh, is putting out a book about video cover art, you must have uh, a pretty extensive collection now. Yeah, I mean, I've uh, I've got about a thousand plus uh, tapes. Uh, I also visited two other collectors, uh, uh, Viva VHS and VideoCollector.co.uk, and so between it, I went. I got like. like Selection of nine thousand tapes. I mean, uh, these video tapes have got like five thousand tapes. It's, it's crazy how many some people have. But I'm always on the lookout. Every uh, every Sunday, I get up early to go to the uh, trunk sales, flea markets to hunt down tapes. But they are getting a lot more rarer to find out in the wild now, as they say. So, are you uh, kind of collecting just the uh, the UK covers exclusively, or the stuff you grew up with, or are you trying to get uh, the US variants too? Well, yeah. I mean, it's it depends what's around, really. I mean, again, you don't really get there's not much tape transfer from country to country. They tend to stay where they are due to there was America was NSTC and the UK was PAL format. So. Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I mean, I've had picked up a couple of German tapes because Germany did some amazing things. Complete, again, completely different with the artwork for a lot. Uh, but I've got some quite plastic embossed video covers that were just amazing from Germany. But uh, whatever, whatever comes along, really, I'm, 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 you know, open to anything as far as VHS goes. Well, and you mentioned too, you're kind of still out there keeping this. Uh painting of the covers and stuff alive i don't know is there really anyone else out there that's doing that sort of thing now uh what collecting videos well no just uh kind of designing the cover like the old style like in the 80s all oh, right uh yeah i mean it's a growing it's one of these things it's kind of i mean when i started it because i started back in uh 
about 2009, uh, and there was not really anyone. And now there's is really is quite it's sort of become a lot more popular because companies do uh, re-release artwork uh, for special editions now. So it's become a lot more of a, a trend as it's growing. So and hopefully, I mean, as, as the sort of young designers are picking up the book getting into this because i mean a lot there was a big trend for a while for sort of uh, minimum minimal poster art and the thing i love about uh, video cover art is completely the antithesis of that it's it's the least minimal thing you're ever going to find but hopefully it's going to turn you know younger artists and designers on to this sort of work like it did me and a lot of my generation i think to, to sort of get back in because i mean the good big thing is that a lot of this is fun i mean it's, it's, it's really it's just fun art and uh, it'd be good to see a bit more come back for the studio films. I mean, I've done a couple. I did uh, recently did Spy for Paul Figg with Melissa McCarthy. So, I mean, Paul Figg's here, it's the second film because he also hired me for The Heat. So, yeah, a lot of the old directors are starting to pick up on it again now and remembering what's a fun, you know, fun way of celebrating your film and getting people inspired and going, oh, it looks great, I want to see that, not just a photo of someone. Which, which you do get a lot more now. Yeah, for sure. That is awesome that some of these people growing up and, you know, becoming filmmakers and kind of sticking to their roots as kids in the video store. And, and again, Thomas, I want to ask you, you know, if the listeners want to check out the book, where, where would you uh, direct them to? Do you have a website or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go on uh, online. I've got uh, vhsvideocoverart.com, uh, which, yeah, then that links through to, to uh, it's everywhere, though. I mean, it's, it's quite it's on general release, so you can pick it up at uh, most online retailers. But, yeah, if you go to the site, bhsvideocoverart.com, it directs you there to, to the different places. Excellent. And hopefully, if the book does well, I'm sure it will. Sounding like, you know, you have a collection over a 1,000 or so, maybe we'll see another book down the road? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to do different countries as well. Like I say, America, obviously, Germany, just, you know, Mexico video covers, all sort of, it'd be good to see a mixture of them from all around the world. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to that as well. And Tom, thanks a lot for being on with me today. Thank you for having me on again. Thank you.